Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. This is another viewer request video. I've actually had three people now ask me to explain how this um, pinion engagement lever and arm uh, works. It's actually a pretty good question because this system, although very simple, is utilized on virtually any model year or series Caterpillar D2 and D4 that had the pony motor start system. So it's a pretty basic setup. I'll just kind of explain real quick how it operates, how it's held together, but I also have kind of an interesting story that goes along with it. Stay tuned. So like I said, this is actually a pretty simple setup. It's comprised of four main components. The first one is the pinion engagement lever, which of course you pull up on to engage the pinion to the ring gear. The engagement lever is keyed to and clamped around what I call the actuator shaft. The actuator shaft has this arm that's welded to the other end of it. And I'll manipulate it so you can see how it works. When you pull up on that engagement lever, the arm rotates forward and that puck on the end of the arm engages a square cut slot that is milled into the side of the engagement arm shaft. And the engagement arm shaft has this return spring on it which returns the mechanism to the released position when the lever is not being pulled. So to disassemble this mechanism, it's, it's pretty straightforward, but you do have to have the tractor split, meaning the engine off of the transmission, and you also need to have the starting pinion drive out of the bell housing. Reason being, you cannot get this arm completely out of its uh, hole when you have the transmission case bolted up to the engine. There's a bit of a, a wall right here that will only allow this to come part way out and then it hits that wall and you can't even remove it. So it doesn't pay to try and disassemble this A with the transmission on or B with the starting pinion in. That pinion drive takes up this whole area right here and it will not allow you to push that actuating shaft far enough inward to disengage it from the lever to even get the lever off either. So when you get the tractor to a state where you can fully disassemble this system, the first step is to remove the pinch bolt from the base of the engagement lever. With the bolt out, you can then gently use a wedge to loosen the engagement lever's grip on that actuator shaft. Once that grip has been loosened, you can then start pushing the actuator shaft in. And when the actuating shaft drifts far enough in, it will disengage from the engagement arm, at which point the arm assembly can be removed from the bell housing. Now you just finish pulling the actuating shaft out of the lever and remove them both. Here you can see the keyway that lines with the slot in the uh, engagement lever, which keeps these two uh, pieces timed in the proper locations. So like I said, disassembly of that whole mechanism is, is pretty straightforward and reassembly is just all the same steps but in reverse. So uh, that brings me to my story now though. Uh, a few years ago on one of the Caterpillar forums there was a guy that had a nearly uh, completely assembled D2. Uh, the engine was still on the transmission, starting engine was still in place, pinion drive was still in place. So he was getting ready to do like a paint job on it and decided he wanted to try and clean this little compartment out here that's around this uh, engagement lever and get all the gunk out of there so he could get paint in there real well, clean it all up. So he decides to take the lever off. So he takes the little pinch bolt out of the bottom of the lever and he cannot get the lever off of the uh, actuating shaft without it drifting out and hitting the edge of the opening. So the next thing he does is try and push that actuating shaft inward. So you know what I'm getting at here. The actuating shaft came disengaged from the arm. The arm popped out enough to allow the guide rod to come out of its bushing and then the arm rotated down and just kind of stuck like that. So now he has a fully assembled D2 that this whole system has kind of sprung apart and he doesn't know really how to get this thing put back together and luckily at this point he just stopped and instead of digging himself into a deep even deeper hole went on the forums and started asking questions like this is what I did uh, what's the best way forward now. So keep in mind now, his whole system was pretty much like this. This little puck was disengaged from the arm shaft. The arm shaft was rotated down, hanging off to the side. And he had a fully intact D2, so he only has a little square opening up here to adjust the clutch that he could even reach into to try and put any of this back. He had the starting pinion in place, which came out to about here and took up all this room. The main clutch was in here and all its linkage and the interlock, so there was very little room, and you only had to go by feel to get down there and try and put this lever back. But 
he was able to get down and rotate the lever and get it started, get the guide rod started back into the bushing, but he could not find a way to grab on to the other end of this actuating shaft and actually pull it out. And he still had the lever on the shaft that was also causing some friction, further just keeping everything in its disassembled state. So basically it was determined that he had three possible options to uh, get this assembly put back properly. Uh, worst case scenario option. He had to split the tractor, get the engine off the transmission. He could then get in here, access all these pieces, and put everything back together and then reassemble the whole thing, which he really, really did not want to have to do. Option number two, which was kind of uh, the mid-range, uh, pull the starting engine off, pull the drive pinion assembly out, so you could then reach in through the opening here, hopefully access that lever, and reaching down through the clutch compartment opening here, hopefully access everything and get all that stuff pushed back in, tighten down, and then reassemble. And kind of, he didn't want to do that either. Um, third option, which was a long shot, was keep the tractor intact, but go in here to the end of that actuating shaft inside the lever there. He drilled a hole in the end of it, tapped it for thread so he could run a bolt into the end of that shaft, and then he could then put a vice grip on the bolt out here, and while someone was reaching in through the clutch compartment, keeping his um, engagement arm lined up, he could pull on that bolt and manage the position of the engagement lever, and he was able to get everything lined up and get that shaft pulled back through the lever, lever tightened down, and luckily didn't have to uh, disassemble anything any further. He was able to get that put back together, but I think he got pretty lucky. It was a pretty long shot deal trying to make that bolt grab that shaft, but he was able to do it. So that's why you really don't want to take one of these uh, mechanisms apart, loosen it out here or anything, if you don't have the tractor in an already disassembled enough state to really access all these components. Because like I said earlier, you can make them all spring apart, but until you have everything fully disassembled, you can't take any one of these completely out. So that's pretty much all there is to know about that sliding engagement mechanism. Like I say, it's a really, really simple setup, but if you don't take it apart at the right time, it can really, really get you in trouble. So, um, and thanks everybody for uh, asking the question, requesting the video. That's something I've been wanting to do for a while, but I finally had that engine out where everything was in a fully visible state, and I finally had a good opportunity to do the video. So I figured might as well get it done. As always, guys, like, subscribe, comment below, and I hope to see you back again.